The Source is back for the final session of this fall's Grimsby Authors Series. Tonight's event is a very special one as two very famous and accomplished Canadians are here to talk about their second careers as authors. One's an astronaut, one is the retired Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada, and both of them have recently published books. I'm often asked why, uh, why I decided to try to write. Let's take a little bit of a look at your book. You talk about the protagonist, Jilly Truett, and how she dresses. Your description, at 34, I dress like who I am. Dark suits, white shirts, crimson lipstick and nails. If it's not a court day, maybe a bright jacket over a strappy dress. Always with black heels. Uh, when I move, it's chin up, shoulders back. Is there any Beverly McLaughlin in that description? <laughs> not really. I, I mean, when I was a lawyer and judge, like other lawyers and judges, I wore black suits, and, uh, but I think she's a little more edgy than I ever was. Was it difficult writing a character, getting into the minds of the characters, especially Jilly Truett, the protagonist? No, I really wasn't. Uh, uh, I think I have a good imagination, but, but more to the point, I'd, over my long career in the law as a, as a lawyer and as a judge, uh, I've met so many individuals of different types. Now, none of my characters are a clone of any individual I know. But, you know, as a judge particularly, you become a keen observer of human nature. It's like a, a parade of people of all sorts, all dispositions, all backgrounds, people who find themselves involved in litigation or in crime or something, and they're parading before you. And I became fascinated by the human stories that I was I considered myself privileged to listen to every day. And so I had so much material in the back of my mind to draw these fictional characters from. What motivates Jilly Truett in this novel? Uh, professionalism. She's, uh, unlike uh, the heroines in a lot of um, uh, novels that have women as the heroine, uh, she's not a misfit. She's not a dystopian character. She's not an alcoholic. She's not somebody who's not functioning well. She's competent, she's smart, she's functioning, and she's very keen, uh, keenly aware of her obligation to her client and to fulfill her professional obligations as a lawyer. Death, but on the other hand, she's also motivated by uh, a strong desire to help people, often less fortunate people. Uh, she has a lot of empathy for people. And sometimes she goes a little far in trying to help people. Uh, but that is her character. Justice McLaughlin promises that her next book will be her memoir, published sometime in 2019. When that comes out, it may find space on the shelves next to Defying Limits, the memoir by Canadian astronaut David Williams. You talk about some of your own personal struggles in the book as well. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned your own fight with cancer. Um, raising a child who was special needs. How do you get through those experiences and find the positive end of things? So when I was writing the book, it was a tough decision to include some of the challenges that I've gone through. And in retrospect, one of the reasons why I chose to write this book is to help people who are, have to work through very difficult circumstances to take on the challenge of adversity and to figure out how you respond to that. Because I've had many situations in my life where I had to work through very difficult situations. The battle with cancer was tough. I was 50 years of age. I had been assigned to my second space flight and I lost everything. I lost all my medical certification as an astronaut, I lost my medical certification as a pilot, and I understood what it mean, means to become a patient and to go in and be on the receiving end of surgery. The recovery took me a fairly long period of time, but I was very fortunate to be able to get my medical certification back and ultimately fly in space as a cancer survivor. You talk a lot in the book about time and the importance of not squandering time. You call yourself a curious person by nature, and that's what's led you to all of these experiences. So I think one of the important aspects that we all have an opportunity to choose on 
is how we live our lives and whether or not we choose to live life to the fullest, embracing all those experiences. I think virtually all of us love the experiences that are happy, that are positive, that make us feel good. But I think a lot of meaning in life can come through working through those very tough times and being able to succeed in taking on these challenges, coming out the other end, having learned from adversity, having learned from that experience and making yourself stronger as an individual. So the real message about the book is let's live life to the fullest while we can. Let's think about living our legacy rather than leaving our legacy. The spring sessions for the Grimsby Public Library's author series are just being finalized. We do know that the lineup will include Anna Porter, Ian Reed, Shelley Wood, and one of my personal favorites, author Andrew Piper. Visit the library's website for information on dates and for tickets. Reporting in Grimsby for The Source, I'm Mike Balsam.